Today, I want to talk with you all about a serious topic, one that is starting to really take headlines in the world of sports, and that is something called CTE, which stands for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy. It has recently come out that Spencer Fisher, a retired UFC fighter, is suffering from multiple cognitive issues, mood disorders, and behavioral problems, which is thought to be due to the repetitive head trauma faced during his seven-year career fighting in UFC. For those who don't know me, my name is Sonam, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date on latest videos and content. For now, let's get back to talking about CTE in more detail. If any of you have watched the movie Concussion or have, have been in the news recently around kind of more deceased NS NFL players and their autopsy results, we're starting to learn about this new diagnosis called CTE, which stands for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy. So what is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE for short? Essentially, it's a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. So if any of you have had parents or grandparents suffer from Alzheimer's dementia, it's essentially that type of disorder, but in a younger, healthier person due to chronic repetitive years of head trauma. In terms of the, the pathology or how this develops in the brain, we think it's actually due to the accumulation of proteins called tau proteins around blood vessels that progresses the degeneration within the brain. These similar proteins are also found in patients with Alzheimer's dementia, so it can lead to why the symptoms are very similar. So what are the main symptoms of CTE? There are three main categories of symptoms. One is cognitive impairment, so we're thinking of memory dysfunction and changes in executive function. What does that mean? It essentially means that they're no longer able to inhibit inappropriate actions. So for example, you know, urinating outside, swearing at someone when it's not appropriate to do so. And this is why you see those personality changes in, in athletes suffering from CTE-like diagnoses. Two, behavioral problems. These include aggression, paranoia, or impulsivity. And three, mood disorders. These include depression, anxiety, PTSD, paranoia again. And unfortunately, as we discussed before, if any of you have had anybody suffer from dementia in your family, they present very similarly to these symptoms. And what's so sad about CTE is these patients are presenting in their 20s and 30s and 40s with these pretty serious cognitive disturbances they have young children. They have spouses who were not expecting to be caregivers for 30 to 40 years. And unfortunately, it develops things like caregiver burnout, um, the actual athlete being on disability pretty much for the rest of their lives, not being able to remember their friends or family, not being able to remember you know, the great career they had beforehand. And that is why it's so serious. So what are the risk factors that put you at risk for getting CTE? Number one is the years that you play a sport that puts you at risk for repetitive head trauma. So you're thinking total years, right? So in, 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 in Fisher's case, he had had seven full years of UFC fighting, and, and UFC is pretty intense. For those of you that are worried if, if one or two concussions can cause this, researchers have actually shown it's not a single concussion that puts you at risk for CTE, but the repetitive microtrauma. So just imagine, for example, all those small hits to your head, which didn't make you daisy, didn't make you concussed, but were enough to start creating changes in your brain. Now add them over a career of 10 to 15 years, and that is what changes the, the brain on a molecular level to cause symptoms like CTE. The second risk factor is the age that you start playing competitive sports, which put you at risk for head trauma. So this is why we try to keep kids away from tackle football until they're in their older teenage years. Some research has shown, for example, that Kids who engage in tackle football at earlier ages prior to the age of 14 are 10 times higher risk of getting CTE than those who wait until they're after 14. That is insane. That correlation is actually more serious than lung cancer and smoking. So this is something that we need to be taking extremely seriously. The last thing is actually genetic predisposition. So recently, if anyone has been reading the news, APOE has been implicated in whether or not you could be at risk for CTE. We don't know too, too much more about it, but if you hear about something called APOE, just know that it's something being researched to know whether or not, unfortunately, people have higher genetic risk of getting these types of diagnoses. So some of the sports that we're worried about when it comes to CTE include tackle football, UFC, boxing, soccer, even military vets, for example, anything where you could hit your head. So you're suspecting a diagnosis of CTE in a patient 
or you are a family member or an athlete. How do you diagnose it? So this is the sad part. You can't. The diagnosis of CTE is made off pathological examination of the brain tissue. So it's actually a post-mortem diagnosis. They look at the brain tissue and I'll put up a picture here um, that shows a normal brain and a brain with CTE. And you'll see that the white and gray matter have significantly shrunk. And then when they look at it under a microscope, that's when they see these abnormal congregation of these tau proteins, which can cause all of these cognitive symptoms that we're experiencing. Now, unfortunately, what is the prognosis for CTE? This is where it gets pretty sad. These athletes are just gonna continue to get worse. So if you imagine your grandparents with dementia, if any of you have seen the timeline and the progression, it's very similar. And that's why they become completely disabled, completely dependent on, on help and their family, and no longer able to really engage in the world after having such an amazing sporting career. And I know many of you will ask, what are the treatments for CTE? So right now, we don't have any treatments to reverse the diagnoses. As with a lot of cognitive disorders, we, we have medications that can help stabilize things. So, you know, if, if your mood is an issue, we can help with mood, mood medication and antipsychotics, antidepressants. If behavior is an issue, we talk about therapy, psychotherapy, behavioral inhibition training. And if headaches are an issue, we can help address the headaches by using prophylactic medications. But there is no single one treatment for CTE. And that's where this becomes a little bit more heart-wrenching, especially as a doctor, because not being able to treat something like this and, and watching your patients decline can be pretty sad. Now, if any of you have been following the news about Spencer Fisher and his recent diagnosis, you know that Dana White, the head of the UFC, has been talking about psychedelics and been trying to talk with the Center for Psychedelic Research at John Hopkins University. So I actually looked into this a little bit. And over the last few years, John Hopkins has actually created a, a research program. And I will link the program in the description so you guys can take a look at it. Looking at psych psychedelics for depression, alcohol use disorder, PTSD, pretty much a lot of other mental health disorders. So I did a little bit of digging to see whether or not psychedelics can be used in something like CTE. They're really pushing it, but they actually don't have much research on it right now. Unfortunately, people like Dana White are noticing that this is gonna be more and more prevalent as your younger fighters are going to start retiring and you will start seeing the effects of this in the future, much like Fisher's case. But we know that psychedelics will essentially induce a state of wakefulness and increased brain connectivity, which during the administration of these medications can help people rewire their brain slightly and increase, for example, their mood, help with smoking cessation, help with alcohol use disorder. Now, when I am saying psychedelics, I'm talking about psilocybin, and that's the one that's commonly referred to in these research trials. They looked at the use of psilocybin in disorders of consciousness. What does that mean? People in vegetative states, people in semi-vegetative states, people who aren't responding appropriately, and people what CTE could be lumped into this category. So what they found was psychedelics increased brain complexity and conscious awareness. Now, the research is still trying to figure out the mechanisms by this, but they're thinking that potentially if you can increase conscious awareness, this is a medication that may be able to help alleviate some of the symptoms of something like CTE or dementia. The John Hopkins Psychedelic Center for Research is actually looking at the use of psilocybin and Alzheimer's disease. So quite simply, if it presents very similar CTE, they can actually use that and look at research in that regard. Now this is really new, but I thought it was an interesting thing to really put on out there because unfortunately, like with time, we're gonna see that you know certain drugs and medications that we hadn't really used in the past could be used as treatments. You know, one of the famous examples was aspirin is was willow bark, and now we use it to prevent heart attacks in millions and millions of people around the world. So CTE, is a pretty significant diagnosis. And I mean, a lot of athletes really have to sit down and think, is the risk of CTE worth it? Do you want to continually hit your head and, and predispose yourself to early onset dementia and behavioral problems? We have actually seen this diagnosis in the likes of Chris Benoit, Aaron Hernandez, Ju Junior Sao, and Joven Belcher. And unfortunately, some of these athletes took their own lives and took the lives of others prior to doing so and on autopsy, it was found that they had symptoms of CTE. So this is a scary diagnosis. And we're now starting to understand it enough where as sports medicine doctors, we're, we're trying to create policies where we're pulling people out when we're suspecting concussions or, or brain injuries. We're asking kids not to play tackle football. We're trying to 
take that out of the, the schooling system to protect kids and their brains for as long as possible. And then we get into more of the controversial topics of whether or not UFC may become legally liable for these athletes afterwards if we now know that repetitive head trauma can cause these symptoms. At the end of the day, patients and athletes have the ability to consent to certain risks. Like, I can't prevent someone from doing something that I don't agree with if they know the benefits and risks of doing so. So this is going to bring out a really interesting area of sports medicine in that these athletes will have to be educated on these risks and whether or not the organization such as the NFL or UFC may be legally liable for these outcomes later on in the future. I don't know the answer to these questions. They're simply questions I'm posing. I'd be interested to hear any comments or questions down below. This is an interesting topic. I'm definitely going to do videos on this in the future and I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to see more videos in the future where I break down common injuries that professional athletes face so that an average fan can better understand them, please subscribe to my channel. For now, that's all.